Jackie and Sam, we love you, and we wish you all the best in your marriage. You're all about happy families. We love you. And happy watch. This is the, if not the best, then one of the best weddings I've been to. I think everything just ran perfectly. Was from perfect. Imagine it rained. It was so perfect. The church with ceremony the to everything. Yeah. Uh, we won't show you everything here because you know we like giving the honor to the couples. So the professional photographer will be the ones with the full footage, yeah. but at least we'll give you something to just see. The turn up session was awesome, and uh, it was just perfect. I, I, most weddings where it rains, it spoils everything, but these ones, the showers actually just made everything. Yeah, it was really good. It pimped us. So, hey guys. Hey. Yeah, so... Thank God for the rains, right? Yes. The roads are flooding, but my issue is I just wish the responsible parties would have gotten to the place of knowing how to harvest all this rainwater because it's so much. And it's just interesting to, to actually think about the fact that a few days ago the country was actually dry. We also saw those images of how it was looking like a desert and now we have so much rain and we are not harvesting it. It's just going like that. Yeah. It's really annoying me and I'm sure it's annoying a lot of you too. So what do you do when you get annoyed? Me? What do I do? Mm. What do I do when I get annoyed? Yeah, like are you ready for this? this? Are you ready for this? Like the situation that you have no control. For this? Are you ready for this? You just tell me what okay. to do when you get annoyed. What I do when I get annoyed, eh? Mm. How many points will I get for this? So many points. Okay. What I do when I get annoyed, mm -hmm. I look at your face. <laughs> and then but the guy with the nice hair is there. Okay, like, like. Then, then I just feel so. Babe, I'm telling you how I look at your face and then it removes my annoyance and you're telling me about some guy's hair. So nice. He has nice hair. There is, there he is. I don't yeah. know if you can see him. Look at that hair, guys. It's good. It's gone, it's gone, it's gone. But he has some nice hair. But it's scattered on his head. Yeah, so yesterday we went for a wedding. It was one of the best weddings I've really been to in a long time. That's a wedding by Sam and Jackie. I think we'll, we'll put some of, the, some of the dances that we had yesterday. It was a really good time. And today, this is session, this is session five. Yes. And today we are talking about the debrief. Yeah, yeah so after the wedding or after every major event, it's usually wise to have a debrief. That's basically where you sit down with your committee or with the people who are involved and you try to figure out what worked, what didn't work. You know, that sort of thing. So the thing you need to, oh, disclaimer, let me say the disclaimer first thing today before I forget. Whatever we are going to share here, I think by now you guys are already bored by this, but let me just say it. Whatever we are going to share in this series, it's not really the solid truth, it's not the gospel truth, it's not cast on stone. So we are not telling you that if you did anything different from what we from, from what we are suggesting that you did it wrong. Nope. It's just what we have experienced, what we've observed, and what we think works. And uh, the purpose of these videos is truly really to start a conversation. You know, we are not like telling you do this, and then you know in Asiapo, if you have other ways of doing it and you think it would help guys, let guys know because the whole point of this is to help guys. Yeah. So. First thing, when you're doing a debrief, one thing you really need to realize about weddings is that people will always criticize weddings based on their preferences. And another thing you need to know is that there's nothing like a perfect wedding, like everything you planned to the T went exactly the way you wanted it. There are always a few issues here and there, sometimes they are major, sometimes they are minor. But there are always things that happen. But one thing you need to know about weddings is that People will always criticize your weddings based on their preferences. For example, suppose in our wedding we have horses. There are people who will come to our wedding and let's say they had a bad experience with a horse when they were kids. Probably they tried to ride, ride a horse, it threw them, they broke an arm or something. So definitely because of that sort of preference, they'll be like, ah, I didn't like this guy's wedding, you know. And 
you have to expect such things. And I and, and, and I think the reason we don't like it when people criticize our weddings is because you see a wedding is something personal. That's number one. Yeah, it's like what you've decided to put in your wedding. It's yes. you what you chose, you know? It's really personal. And when people criticize things that are personal to us, of course we don't really we feel take offended. It so good. So that's understandable when you catch feelings for people to criticize your wedding. Another thing that makes us feel bad is because nobody usually plans to have two weddings. Everybody the plans one, yes. to have one wedding for a lifetime. So when people criticize something, first of all, you feel bad because it's not, it's not just something you can repeat and correct the yeah. mistake. You know, you have to live with whatever issue you had for the rest of your life. Yep. Like if something went bad and people were not happy about it, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. Elisha happened. So automatically there's that. You are excused for catching feelings if people don't have good reviews about your wedding. But you also need to understand that people will always criticize, like I said, based on their preferences. Mm. For example, somebody likes red velvet cake. You serve white, white forest. It's like I didn't like the cake in that Yeah, definitely cake. they won't like and you shouldn't really take it so hard because that's their preference. Yeah. And you see what we said about the wedding is that this wedding is first yours before it's anybody else's. Yes. So the whole thing that matters is, we're not saying you disregard what people think, but at the end of the day, the opinion that should really count is yours, because this is what, this was your wedding. So if the wedding really pleased, uh, not the wedding, okay, the cake, because you're talking about the cake. The cake. If the cake made you happy, then you, you're happy and you had the wedding that you wanted to have. Yeah. If the seats and the deco was good to you and other guys are like, the seats and deco was not perfect, excuse me, it was my wedding, it's me who chose the colors and the types of seats, so let it not break you. Because yep. I know sometimes we, we, we tend to work so hard to plan weddings and our way own weddings to please people. And when you feel that they are not pleased, then you get disappointed. Yeah. That shouldn't be the case. You should be happy. Whether it rains or does not rain on your wedding day, you just get down and be happy. Yep. Another thing about that debrief. Now, this is the sign. You remember that part I said where there's nothing like a perfect wedding? There's always something that will go off. This is the part where you know whether you really had a good committee team. Yeah. I remember during my wedding, Oops, sorry. from my point of view, from where, I, from where I was standing, everything was okay. It's, it's after the wedding, weeks after the wedding is when I was talking to my committee members and they were like, hey, Curtis, my dad, you know, this is what was happening in the background. We had this issue and this issue. And I was like, really? You know, I couldn't, I didn't notice all those things. Yeah. And basically what I liked about it is that they, they made sure they covered it up. That neither Soila nor I were able to notice those things. Because you know, this is your wedding. When you start seeing things going off, it, it messes up with your mood. Mm. So they made sure that as the couple who is getting married, we didn't get to notice or see those things. Mm. So that's part, that's part of the reason why you really need to have a good committee. Whereby they, are, they, they have to make sure that whatever goes wrong, you guys will not get to know about it. Mm -hmm. Unless now they, they, tell, they tell you later on. Mm. Yeah. So that's part of the debrief and that's how you should take debriefs. Criticisms will be there. It doesn't matter how perfect you think you did your wedding. Somebody somewhere will be unhappy with one thing or another. another. So don't take it so... Don't, don't lose friends because somebody didn't say something nice. And actually, debriefs you know, are not like to make you do it better next time because you know, won't do another wedding. Yeah. It's to help anybody else who's probably in the community yeah, yeah. and they want to do another a, a wedding. To know what to avoid, yes, know what, what to, to borrow. Avoid, what to borrow. Yeah. You see, it's just to ensure that if you're going to use the same, particularly for guys who are using the same people to run different committees, like you have the same circle of friends. Yeah. It just helps refine the wedding planning processes for different guys mm. who are coming after you. Actually, I think you've said it really well. The debrief is not for you yeah. as the married couple. You've just gotten married, so you're not planning another wedding mm. for yourself. And if anything went no, wrong, it's not like you're going to change it. Yeah. So the debrief is basically for you to be able to help other couples in the future mm. who would want to, to know how you guys did your, your thing. So, and another Hurry reason out. another reason for a debrief is, let's say in case people caught feelings because of we stepped on each other's toys, 
during the wedding planning process and you do want to talk about it until the wedding is done it's that By moment <laughs> that people just speak out and say Aki Katis, I didn't like the way you you handled me with finances you know yes. it's just to forgive yes. Yes. and move on and ensure that we don't have grudges yes. yeah that's the purpose so, that's, eh? that's, purpose that, of debrief that's true one thing about weddings and if you've done a wedding I'm sure you can attest to this you get to see sides of people that you never really knew existed yeah. both good and bad yeah. There are things about people that will disappoint you. There are things about people that will like, surprise you in a good way. Yeah. And especially even couples when they are getting, when they are preparing for a marriage, for a wedding, most couples tend to be under pressure. And you know, when people are under pressure, they are not really at their best. Yeah. So they might have talked to you badly or something. The purpose of a debrief is to just what she said, reconciliation. Yeah. Because you yeah. step on each other's toes. Yeah. Because somebody probably is in charge of a particular department, and the person who's in charge or the people who are supposed to like handle stuff are not doing it as per the earlier discussions and or really stepping each other's toes. And you guys are still friends. So mm -hmm. if you're still not, if you're not willing to let go of that friendship. Get out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Sam and Jackie, this is to you. Congratulations. All the best in everything. God bless you. Yeah, all the best. Everything good you can ever say. We wish it to you. Wish you all the best. Uh, thank you for watching this vlog. I know it was a bit short, but uh, thank you so much. Jesus. Subscribe. Mwah, mwah, mwah.